Hello, Tom Shanklin here with my lovely wife, Susan. Hi. You're looking excellent today, by the way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful day uh, in, I guess we're in northern Minnesota, sort of. We're mm -hmm. north of the Twin Cities and uh, had a nice adventure today chasing, <laughs> chasing the dog who escaped. So anyway, but uh, we are here to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And today uh, we're going to talk about when heaven comes down. The last uh, video that we did, we talked about uh, how to experience personal revival. And we shared from a scripture in Isaiah, uh, where Isaiah said, O oh Lord, that you would rend the heavens and come down, and that you would come down like a fire and melt the mountains, you know. and." We're experiencing lots of mountains in society and in the world today. Lots of problems, obstacles, hindrances, things that uh, don't seem to want to move. But when God comes down, things change. He melts the mountains. And there's power when he comes down in his glory. And I believe that we need to experience uh, the presence of God in our own individual lives, yeah. in our churches, in our communities, in our nations, and in the world. We need the power of God. We need the glory of God. And you know, another scripture in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah said, you know, or, or the Lord spoke through Isaiah, uh, darkness shall cover the earth mm -hmm. and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon Susan and Tom and you and his glory shall be seen upon us. And it says that the nations will be drawn to us because of that glory. And the glory of God is a tangible, manifested presence of God. Well, when I got saved, there was a tangible sense of the presence of God. Hallelujah. I mean, it was tangible. I could touch it. It was real. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we know from the scriptures that God is everywhere. He is omnipresent. Mm -hmm. We also know that when we receive Christ, he comes and he lives in our hearts. So the presence of God is in us. We also know when we gather together with other Christians that he's there in our midst. Mm -hmm. But then there's the manifested presence. I mean, when he's there. He's there anyway, but it's when we know and experience that he is truly with us in powerful ways. And it causes things to happen. You know, another, we talked about another portion of scripture from Isaiah where Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple and it talks about how he came under conviction through that, because of that presence, he says, I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. So when the presence of God comes, then conviction comes. But he doesn't just leave us, you know, defeated and discouraged over our sin and failures. He forgives us. He forgave Isaiah and he cleansed him. He brought a coal from the altar and cleansed his lips. When I got saved, rain, literal rain, wet wet rain a physical manifestation came came down on me and washed me clean and not that it was raining anywhere else it's just rained on rained me. right on my person i was holding my baby baby nathan and there was a couple men there sitting on the on the I sidewalk i think there was three but okay. i could be wrong all right and they said what does this mean <laughs> And you said? Well, I didn't say. I said, I know what this means. I'm washed. I'm washed clean. I'm forgiven. Yeah. And you know, when you were talking about bringing heaven down, sometimes, sometimes, uh, when we get excited about God, we get very emotional. Mm -hmm. But that's a little different. You know, when you, when you have a, when you sense when you have a genuine sense of the presence of God, it goes beyond that, you know, oh, I got a big ring, it's, uh, you know. It's the awe 
of God. It, yeah, yeah, and and actually, when you have the awe of God, it, it it's great peace. I can't say I got all excited and went Yahoo, but I had a a peace. Mm -hmm. Now, after I got saved, I sat on the curb <laughs> of Main Street. Um, Spring Grove and said praise the Lord to everybody who walked by you know um, I was pretty darn happy to be forgiven and when we bring down heaven in our homes you'll know it yeah. and it will bring a peace and it can also bring conviction mm -hmm. uh, to you and other people there and and you and sometimes you just have to let the Lord do his thing with other people mm -hmm. you can't make them do something you can't make them get saved you can't make them get happy you can't make them get whole you gotta let God do that you gotta you gotta let God repair and restore and and Bring, God will do it. Right. Don't worry about it. But He uses us, you know, to bring. He uses us to bring a witness to people, and you know, even Isaiah's case, you know, he was convicted about his speech. That was the sin that God dealt with him. He said, "I'm I'm in the live in the midst of a people with unclean lips. I have unclean lips." Uh, and then God cleansed his lips, and for you know, he was forgiven and cleansed. But then the Lord said, you know, uh, who shall I send and who will go for me? And Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. So he convicts us, he cleanses us, and then he commissions us. And that's, you know, it's just so powerful to encounter God that way. And, you know, the early church had an encounter with God. Jesus came down. Oh, that you would come down, Lord. He came down. And powerful things happen because Jesus was God in the flesh. And miracles happen. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about uh, doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. He preached and many pe people came under conviction. Many people received forgiveness. And then he went to the cross. And finished it up. Yeah, He died for our sins on the cross of Calvary. And then they buried him, but death couldn't hold him. He rose again. And, and we're going to be in the book of Acts chapter 1 here today. But it talks about how after he rose again, he spent time with his disciples and he instructed them concerning the kingdom of God. You so, know, it's just not a one-time event. E right. Every day we should be bringing heaven down absolutely in, in our lives and our family and um, I was telling Tom last uh, yesterday and during the night I didn't sleep and I was so tired yesterday I was so tired I was so tired and I was telling him that it was such a waste of my life yesterday because I was so tired. You know, when you're so tired, you, can, you can't function, and that's the way I was. And I, I don't like to waste my time. I don't, all that time I could have been happy. Now, all that time I could have been enjoying, enjoying life, enjoying, and enjoying God, and, and, and I think we should make it an effort make to uh, enjoy God and bring heaven down. Amen. So let's, on. Read, let's read some scripture here. Scripture. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. So the book of Acts was written by Luke. The former treatise he's talking about is the book of Luke. And he says, oh, that's, that's what Jesus began to do and teach. Because you see, Jesus is not done. He's still doing and teaching. Only now he's doing and teaching through his people. Amen. And it says, unto the day which he was taken up. 
After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments to his, his apostles, whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. So this is not a fable. This is something that happened in history. Being seen of them 40 days, uh, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So we know that Jesus had told his disciples to go into all the world and make disciples. He had told them to go and preach the gospel mm -hmm. uh, to all creatures. And yet here he says, wait. So we might be confused. Are we to wait or are we to go? Well, we are we're to wait and then we're to go. We need to wait for the promise of the Father because this that we're about to receive is going to change our lives and enable us to have successful, powerful ministries. You know, if you promise somebody something, mm -mm. you're going to deliver. That's our God. And then, you know, we know truce breakers in our world today mm -hmm. that break their promise. But God isn't a truce breaker. If he promised something, he will do it. And what did he promise? He promised the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, wait for the promise of the Father. He says, John truly baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Now the word baptize, the original Greek word means to immerse. To That's immerse. how they used to dye cloth. Yep, so they dunk the cloth in the water and come out and be a different color. So when you're baptized in water, you're immersed in water. That's the biblical way to be baptized. That is baptism. But Jesus said, not only are we to be baptized in water like John taught, but we're also to be baptized or immersed in the Holy Spirit. So we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which he told them to wait for this baptism. Because when you get born again, you, you get the Holy Spirit. Exactly. So this is, this is like uh, an upgrade when you buy a car. Yeah, it's, they, it's, do you want all the bells and whistles or do you just want the plain Janer? It's what you call more, <laughs> more. But you know what? It's part of our salvation. It's provided for through what Jesus did. And this is, this is the promise of the Father, which is for every believer. Now, these people had already received the Holy Spirit within them through salvation. Mm -hmm. But he told them to wait for this Spirit to come upon them, to baptize, to immerse them, so that they'd have the power. So let's read a little bit more here now. It says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now, we know that Jesus uh, is the Messiah, and they saw him as the Messiah, and part of the prediction of the Messiah was the coming king that would usher in the kingdom of God to earth. So they were looking for this physical kingdom to be established, and they said, is this what you're going to do now, Jesus? And then Jesus says, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put into his own power or authority, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. What's a witness? A witness, somebody that gives proof or testimony. So, if, 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 uh, if it's a witness, then you're proving. That's right. You're, you're proving that Jesus is alive. That's, that's pretty, pretty good stuff. That's powerful. But you see, it, <clears throat> Jesus told him, don't worry about you know the times and the seasons. Sometimes Christians get so wrapped up into you know end time theology and what's happening now, what's going to happen next. But he told them to focus on their part, which is to receive the power 
and to be witnesses. And you know, it's this to prove to prove that Jesus is alive. And that's the same thing today. This is what this is what we're called to do. You know, prove it. We're, we're not called to bring forth a physical, natural kingdom. We're called to bring forth the kingdom of God. We're called to preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, set the captives free, bring liberty into people's lives to let them know about Jesus Christ, the Savior. So he said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when you receive this immersion of the Holy Spirit, then you will receive power. The word in the Greek is dunamis. Dynamite. We get our word dynamite from. So we get dynamite power to be a witness. You know, comes to mind uh, about a woman named Jackie Pullinger. And she was, uh, well, she's still alive, actually. And she is from England. And Jackie Pullinger got saved and she got a burden to become a missionary. And as she prayed about it, she felt led to go to Hong Kong as a missionary. Well, everybody told her, you know, you, you can't be a missionary. It's just a crazy idea. Give it up. Don't do it. But one pastor said to Jackie Pullinger, if God is telling you to go to Hong Kong, you need to obey and you need to go. So Jackie Pullinger saved up all her nickels and dimes and bought a one-way ticket to Hong Kong, and she went over there as a missionary. Uh, she she taught in order to sustain herself. She taught English, I think. And, but she went into the darkest part of the city, they called the Forbidden City, where all the triple X-rated theaters were, all the opium dens, and all the worst sin, and the hardest place. She went there and started preaching the gospel and sharing about Jesus Christ. And, you know, she was very faithful, but she had very little success. And then she met this missionary who told her about what we're talking about, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so she prayed and she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and she spoke in other tongues. But she, kind of like you said, you know, it's not always an emotional thing. She didn't have much emotion with it. And she didn't really understand what it was for, so she just kind of let it go and didn't didn't continue to pray and, and, and stay filled with the Spirit. But then she met another missionary couple, and they said, well, were you baptized in the Holy Spirit? And she says, yeah, but it didn't do much for me. And then they explained to her the purpose of it and how praying in the Spirit brought a release of the power. And so she was reignited in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And she began to go back to the forbidden city and walk the streets again, just like she did before. Only now she was praying in the Spirit and she was allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through her. And she told the same story about Jesus' death on the cross and how he died for their sins and people started getting saved. Kaboom! <laughs> because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I think that's how we should go about our day, just blowing up the devil because he wants to to throw us off track, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, right when we throw our feet over the side of the bed, he wants to tell us how awful things are yeah. or how I don't have enough in my bank account or how, oh, I don't feel so hot today or my kids or the world or this candidate or that person, you know, this king, this... This whatever you yeah. know, we 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 get down before we can ever get up. The devil's a liar, and he's and always I, trying to undermine what God's doing in your life. And you got to remember that God said you'll receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And I know I shared in the last video what when the power of the Holy Spirit came upon me. I have never been the same. So we got to blow up the devil, you know. All, all through the day yeah. and and also you can set landmines in your in in your children's path mm. because sometimes you know our kids need help you know we want to blow up the devil to keep them away from our children or mm. grandkids I feel so bad for my grandkids they're getting taught all this kind of strange stuff you know and so we need to be out there fighting in the spirit, yeah, not in the natural. 
people need the Lord and people need the truth of God's word because mm -hmm. this this is solid. The other stuff is like sifting sand. But anyway, the next thing that happened then is Jesus ascended and went back to heaven. And um, somebody described the book of Acts. They said, well, this is what happened. Uh, Jesus went up and the Holy Spirit came down and the church went out. And that's the story of the the book of Acts, and that's exactly what God wants to do today. He wants you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and have power uh, to be a witness. So then in the 14th verse, the same chapter, it's talking about the, the people that were together. And uh, it says, these all continued with one accord. Oh, one accord, what does that mean? One accord in prayer and supplication with what the women it? with oh. the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren okay accord <laughs> means to rush along in unison unison oh wouldn't it be grand if if the body of Christ was in unison it says it, it means to have one passion and oh. one mind it speaks of harmony so here's this group of people in prayer in unison in oneness in one accord they weren't in a honda they were in one accord together praying and seeking the lord and this is how outpourings of the spirit come this is how revival comes it's through prayer it's and through unity. asking god yeah and unity and unity that is unity is not compromise and it's not uniformity it doesn't mean we're going to agree on every little thing mm -mm. It means we're going to come together in and, the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, and focus uh, on the things that are important. So there was such an awesome outpouring of the Spirit at Hernhut, and, and this stemmed from um, a group of people that were in Moravia and uh, Bohemia, which is now, which was the Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic, and many of them came to the Lord through the ministry of a man named John Huss. Yes. And he, John Huss was before Martin Luther, but he was a reformer also, but he was persecuted and eventually uh, burned at the stake for the things that he taught. But many people were influenced by him and were raised up, but then they were persecuted. But there was a man named uh, Nicholas Van Zinzendorf, uh, who lived in Germany that had some land and Zinzendorf invited these people to come and start a community there and people that came were you know these people that were influenced by John Huss but there was also like Baptists and Lutheran many different groups came but they had trouble getting along they weren't quite in one accord so Zinzendorf wrote up this document called uh, the Brotherly Co Covenant or something like that and said, we will stop focusing on the things that separate us. We're going to focus on the cross and be united. And so then they tried to get along, but they, they struggled because human nature uh, doesn't always want to cooperate with what God wants to, wants to do. But at any rate, they began to pray. And there was an 11-year-old girl that started praying that this community would come together and that God would pour out his spirit. And there were others that prayed. And Zenzendorf was preaching at a communion service and he was preaching on the Lamb of God. And the Holy Spirit came down at Hernhut. At Hernhut. And from that point, they were never the same. That community was never the same. There was such an outpouring of the Spirit that they said when they left that place, they didn't know if they had, if they were in heaven or on earth anymore. The presence of God came in that place. Well, I would so like probably. to like to pull down heaven in in Scandia or where you live. Where do you live? So, you know, why do we talk about Hernhut and Azusa and all these other revivals and so forth? Are we just dwelling on the past? No, we want to see what God has done to encourage us to know that he can do it again today. Amen. But, you know, the result of this thing was just so powerful. They, they made an agreement to have a 24-hour-a-day prayer meeting 
And so they prayed 24 hours a day. I mean, they divided up the day and different people took different parts. And actually that prayer meeting at Hearn, who lasted 100 years, but they didn't just pray, they started sending out missionaries from there. They sent something like 226 missionaries within 50 years. And this is before there was missionaries. I mean, this was before the missionary movement that happened later. And they had such an influence uh, on the world, so power, they were, they were such a powerful influence out of that local church, you know, and God can use your local church in the same way, if you'll follow the Holy Spirit. And if you'll get in unison. Yeah. And they sent missionaries to all over Europe. They, they some of the missionaries went into established churches and to, to bring the Holy Spirit and the influence of God there. Uh, some of them went to uh, North America, South America, Asia, Africa, and many people were saved through those missionary endeavors. And <clears throat> on one of their missionary endeavors on the way to America, uh, they were on a boat <coughs> with a man named John Wesley. And a big storm came up and the boat looked like it was gonna sink and John Wesley was shaken in his boots with fear that he was gonna die. But these Moravians, they're called the Moravian Brethren from Hernhut, were singing hymns and praising God on the boat. And it, it struck John Wesley, he realized they had something that he didn't have. And so he went on to America and he had a very little success as a missionary. He went back to England and he was in a prayer meeting at a place called Aldersgate. And his statement was that at that prayer meeting, his heart was strangely warmed and he knew that he was a child of God. But I just learned that about seven months later, he was at another prayer meeting, which was led by one of these Moravian brethren at a place called Fetter Lane. And his experience there went beyond being strangely warmed. The power of the Spirit came into that meeting. It was an overnight prayer meeting and many people fell on their faces under the power of God and just miraculous things happened at that meeting. And after that meeting at Fetter Lane, John Wesley's ministry took off with power. And in his meeting, people would would fall under conviction. They would fall on their faces before So God. heaven came down. Heaven came down at Fetter Lane. I would like to see heaven come come down in my church. Amen. We want the presence of God. I want heaven to come down in our house every day. Amen. I want the presence of God to come upon Susan. <gasps> <laughs> and Tom and you. Praise God. Yes, yes. You know, we we think this is so so out of reach. Mhm. Mm but if God, if it's God ordained, if God wants it, it will happen. You know, it's 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 normal to bring down heaven into our homes. You know, our homes can get unpeaceful, and we need to bring down heaven. And then whoever enters it. Um, is going to sense that, and um, I was I was thinking of we had a visitor today, and I thought he was going to fall asleep on the couch. <laughs> he, he was so relaxed. Well, that's good. And uh, it was you know that's just kind of nice you know, I don't think we were boring. Hopefully not. <laughs> but anyway, you know it's a present. And then our dog ran away. She must have. She must. She must have not felt the presence. But <laughs> anyway, I think she it's, did come back. Yes, yeah, she did come back. Oh my gosh! But anyway, I think it's normal. Christianity is normal. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is normal. 
Speaking in tongues is normal. Laying hands on the sick is normal. Having the wisdom of God is normal. You're, sometimes people want to make out uh, that people that have the gifts of the Spirit are full, full, full of the Holy Spirit, they're weird. No, you're not weird, you're normal. You're following the Bible. Normal Christianity. Oh man, absolutely. Well Susan, why don't you pray that heaven would come down wherever folks are watching or listening to us today. Father God, I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ that yes, this Lord that your spirit would invade their hearts. Mm -hmm. And I pray, Father God, as they reach out and seek you mm -hmm. and ask for your presence to come down and fill their home, mm -hmm. you will. Yes. It's a promise. You promised us this. Yeah. And I thank you, Father God. We apprehend it. We expect it in our homes. Mm -hmm. We expect it in our lives. We expect it in our church. We have an, an expectancy in our heart. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Father God. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks so much for watching or listening. It's been great to be with you. Check out our website at shanklinministries.org. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you're on uh, Apple Podcasts, just subscribe so you can stay in touch with us. We'd love to stay in touch with you. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. God bless you. Have a great day.